welcome. I'm, I'm really happy to be here and talk to you all about uh, database performance. Let me uh, walk you through a scenario that I'm calling the nightmare scenario. If you've been uh, deploying Rails apps for any amount of time, you've probably come across this scenario where your code works fine in development. It's performant, you know, all the tests pass, and then you deploy it, and people start to use your app. They start to add data to your database, and over time, the database gets slower and slower. Uh, this is indica uh, indicative of the fact that you have a scaling problem. So now, how are you gonna solve the scaling problem? Are you going to uh, rewrite everything in Elixir? You're gonna start using Kubernetes, put it all to the cloud, you know? Uh, that won't work in this case because the scenario I outlined is actually a database scaling problem. So no, no matter what language you're using, no matter what platform, uh, if you're sending uh, queries to the database that don't scale as the database gets more and more rows inside of it, then it's, uh, you're gonna continue having a problem. So, hi, my name's Star. <laughs> I have had lots of database scaling problems because, <laughs> because in 2012, um, two friends of mine and I started Honey Badger. If you haven't heard of us, we do exception monitoring for uh, Rails apps, for Elixir apps, JavaScript apps, et cetera. And that means we have thousands of errors being reported per second to our service. Uh, we have to let people page through, you know, errors that have hundreds of thousands of occurrences in them. Like, that's, that's a real thing. That really happens. And we were built, at least initially, entirely on Rails and Postgres. So we learned a lot about scaling Rails and Postgres for uh, databases that involve, that have lots of data in them. And in this talk, we're gonna talk about how the database stores and retrieves your data, kind of, in kind of a cartoony way. We're going to talk about how to identify potential scaling problems using explain. And finally, we'll apply that to common um, Rails idioms and show how the queries that they um, generate don't always scale well. Disclaimers. This talk is very Postgres-centric, although you can do pretty much everything here in MySQL and I, I think uh, SQLite. Uh, we're talking mostly also about read queries. Uh, my, my thinking here is that if you have uh, a huge amount of data being written into your database at once, you'll know about it. You know, but with read queries, the thing that, that often happens is that you write a query that reads some uh, data from your database and it works fine in development, but then as your database scales, it gets slower and slower. And that's what we're gonna be focusing on. And finally, the talk is full of analogies. So, yeah. If you know enough about it to argue with me, you're not my target audience. This is, I, was, I was very, very proud of this slide. Uh, I, I think I might become a lawyer now. All right, so what is Active Record? If you're doing database access in a Rails app, you're probably using Active Record. Active Record lets you take, um, it lets you call some Ruby methods, and from those methods, it generates a SQL query, sends that to the database, and then you know deals with whatever data is sent back. We're mostly worried about uh, the the actual SQL queries that are being generated here. So in this case, um, I have a fictitious table full of books and we're asking for uh, the books where the title is Monster Manual. The thing about Active Record and databases is that there's a tragic flaw built in because Active Record is very flexible. You can, you can uh, use Active Record to very quickly and easily ge generate extremely complex queries. Uh, but databases are actually pretty rigid. And you probably have some sense of this by the fact that you have to uh, define a schema before you can do anything with the database. And we're gonna get, a, we're gonna ex explain what I mean uh, about that a little bit, a little bit more as we go on. So, let's follow this query. Select all books where name equals monster manual. And we're gonna do it in Ruby pseudocode, which is a technique I like to use when I'm trying to understand how hard computer science -y stuff works. I just kind of write it in uh, sort of bad Ruby. <laughs> so a database table is kind of like an array, right? 
Here I've got an array of books, and each has a title, a star, as it could have it could have whatever uh, other attributes you wanted to add to it. And to find all of the um, to find all of the books that have a certain title, well, we have to loop through the array. We have to loop through every item in the array and check its title to see if it's the one we're looking for. And that's the source of a lot of our problems because array searches are linear, right? It takes twice as much time to loop over 20 elements as it does to loop over 10 elements. And so this is the source of that, um, that problem we see where as your database grows, uh, the, it gets slower and slower. That indicates that we're probably looping over more and more records. So databases are slow by default and we have to intentionally speed them up. We have to intentionally speed up certain queries by adding indices. Um, an index is in a lot of ways like a hash, right? Uh, in this case, I've created a index where I have the titles of each book and they point to uh, the index in the array for the, the uh, book. And so this is really useful because now I can look up books in constant time. I don't have to loop through 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 items to find uh, a specific book. I can just uh, get its uh, index from the, 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 get its index from the index, this is confusing. I can look it up in my hash, get the ID and pull it out of the array. And it also has some, this other benefit, which is it uh, pre-calculated, pre-calculates the sorting because in indices, uh, things are stored in a certain order. But, uh, indices aren't magic, right? They only speed up specific queries. Adding an index on title doesn't help me if I need to query by uh, the number of stars a book has. Uh, indices are kind of brittle. It's really surprisingly easy to change a query in such a way that the database can no longer use the index it was previously relying on. And they consume system resources, which isn't much of a, a problem in development, but you know, it becomes uh, notable in production. So this has been our, you know, our two cent guide to databases and indices and all this stuff. It's pretty basic. If you've been asleep so far, so it's time to wake up, it's Thursday, we're gonna get into some really fascinating um, computer science topics because how does the database know the fastest way to perform a query? The answer to this question is I have no idea. <laughs> it's, it's, it's totally magic, but as an artifact of this process, it produces a thing called a query plan. And a query plan is useful because by reading it, you can tell if a particular query is going to scale or not. That's pretty cool. Query plans, you get them by uh, running explain. Uh, there are a couple different ways you can do this. In Active Record, you can just tag on explain on the end of your, uh, your chain of whatever those are called, methods. In Postgres, you just put explain in front of your query. And there's lots of different ways you can run this. There are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of uh, different options you can send in to explain. You can have it output for both format and YAML uh, and, and all this stuff, but we're just gonna keep it simple for this, this presentation because honestly, it's pretty complex already, or at least it, it looks like it. Uh, I, I ignored this. Uh, this is a type of this is the type of stuff that um, the Rails logs will spit out if a query is slow in development. You might see something like this in your log files. And it's really easy to ignore it because it just looks like a bunch of, of computer garbage. But it's pretty simple, it's just very dense. So let's uh, break it down. The first part of the query plan is a thing called a node list. And that's just the to-do list that the database makes um, for how it's going to perform the thing you asked it to, to do, right? I, we read it from uh, bottom to top in this case. So sequential scan on books, that means get all the book records. Sort them by created app, that means well, sort them. And then limit it by whatever, take the first 10. So that's, that's pretty easy to understand. Uh, the second part of the query plan are these performance estimates. Now, performance estimates have three parts, a cost, which is just a, it's a unitless number that's only meaningful uh, when comparing it to other cost numbers in the same query plan, right? So I kind of ignore it. 
you have rows, the estimated number of rows that have to be looped over. Uh, this is very useful. And finally, you have width, which is the bytes in each row, which I, I, I honestly don't know why I would ever use that. So we have lots of different node types. We have lots of different um, performance estimate numbers. The good news is that you only really need to keep in mind uh, these two items. You have to look for sequential scans. That indicates that the database is looping over um, the, lots of rows of the database. Uh, and you need to look for, well, rows. Like, if it's look, looping over a lot of rows, all the rows in your database, that's a bad thing, usually. All right, so let's do some Rails. Let's apply this to some Rails. If you're gonna follow along at home, because I know somebody's gonna do this stuff at home, they're gonna, they're gonna watch the videos, and they're going to send me an email saying that everything I put up here was a lie. If you're gonna do this at home, you need a um, data set that is it somewhat mirrors your production data set. And that's because Postgres will do different things, uh, any database will do different things depending on the amount of data that you have in the database, right? We may say that indices are faster than looping over all the items in your table. Well, that's only true if you have lots of items in the table. If you have one item in this table, just looking at that item is the fastest thing. So a couple thousand records is a good starting point. Idiom number one. This, this isn't really an idiom, this is more of a mistake, but it's so common, I'm just gonna call it an idiom because you know, we need to own our mistakes. The missing index, what does that mean? Well, we talked a second ago about how um, indices are used to speed up specific queries, looking up records by a certain column. Okay, so sometimes you create a database and you don't realize that you're going to be performing lots of uh, queries against a certain column, and so you don't add an index. And what this looks like if you, if you have this uh, happen to you, if you explain a query involving a lookup by a certain column, in this case we don't have an index on uh, the title column, it looks like this. We have our terrible two. Right? We've got sequential scan, bad news. We've got rows equals 2,000, which in this case is my entire data set. So, yeah, so that's not good. What, and the way we fix this, I mean, you just add the index, right? And you can do this via um, Rails migration easily with, you know, add index. And if you do that and then rerun the explain well, um, you'll find that that sequential scan has been replaced by an index scan. And rows now equals one, which is, is good. This query is fast. This query won't slow your database down as your data set grows. So this is, it sounds silly, it sounds sort of dumb for me to, to tell you that yeah, you've gotta add indices for, to, to your columns if you need them, if you need to look up uh, records by them. But this is, is super common. When I was a freelancer like several years ago before starting Honey Badger, one of the first things I would do when I would take on a new uh, project that had been built by other people was to take a look and see which columns were being used for recalling data. And more often than not, there weren't indices on them. And just by adding a couple lines of code, I was able to speed up performance, make the client super happy, make me look like a genius. So it's a, it's a real problem, it happens. Idiom number two, counting. You all thought these were gonna be really complex idioms, I bet, right? So no, we're, we're gonna keep it simple. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it to, to you guys to complicate things. I imagine that if we had a admin interface for our bookstore or whatever application has this book model, we might want to say, we might want to, to tell people how many books are in the system total. So you would be tempted to say, okay, um, brackets equal whatever, book count. The problem with this is that when you ask Postgres to count all of the um, records in a, a table, it literally counts them one by one. Um, that's bad news, right? So here we have explain, select count from books. This is a query that is uh, 
Well, the select count from books is the query that's run um, from our active record uh, method a second ago. Uh, as you can see, this has a sequential scan over 3,000 rows. Uh, my table's magically gotten bigger in between slides. And yeah, so it's doing a sequential scan over all these rows. It's counting them up one by one. So how do you get around this? Um, I mean, you would think that Postgres would know how many records were in a, a table automatically, but it just doesn't. How do you scale counts? Well, sorry, there's a creaky board here. I keep stepping on it. How do you scale counts? The best answer, and the answer for pretty much all of these, for, for all of these idioms is don't. Just avoid the problem. See if you can get away with not displaying the, uh, the total number of records in your database. So the only problem uh, that we have with count is that it counts with each record in the data set. So if you're able to look at a smaller data set, it's perfectly reasonable to use count. Another option, which just, just rends my, my soul, right? I hate this. But sometimes you don't need exact data, uh, especially if you're you know, generating a report that is, I don't know, it's just sort of eye candy over off to the side. People don't need to know exactly um, what the count is on something. And finally, we have, if you, if you can't do anything else, at least cache it, right? There are a couple ways to do this. You can uh, do your own caching in Redis or something like that. You can use Rails um, uh, counter caches for in certain cases when you're dealing with associated records. Uh, if you do cache the counts in, in the database itself, I would sort of warn you to be careful because that can affect uh, performance if you have a lot of reads go, or a lot of writes happening at your database because constantly writing and updating these uh, cache values can cause locking to happen in your database and that can slow things down. So idiom number three, sorting. It's super common, you know, to, to sort things. Who doesn't sort things? Um, and it's super common if you have an index to have several different sorting options. But you may not realize that if you add that extra sorting option, say sort by uh, popularity or by stars or whatever, it may not, your database may not be set up to uh, do this efficiently, right? So if we, if we sort a, um, if we sort, sort our books table by created app and explain that, look at the query plan, we see that we have sequential scan 3,000. Right, I, I told you it was gonna be, be simple. I told you this query plan was gonna boil down to be simple, and it's so simple it's almost boring at this point. So sequential scan, 3,000. That indicates that, well, we're asking the database to sort our table, and it's doing that right now in real time, just as if you had all the data in a, a Ruby array and you, pre you, you ran the sort method on it. The way to speed this up, how to scale, yeah. The way to speed this up is just to add an index. As I mentioned earlier in the talk, indices, um, indices are in a, they occur in a certain order, right? When the database creates your index, it orders it in a certain way. And if that way happens to be exactly the same as the way that you need it ordered in your query, it can just pull that information from the index. So after adding our index, we can see that uh, we can see that, yeah, we've replaced our sequential scan with an index. So, yeah, so we have an index scan now, and rows is still really high. It's still 3,000, but that's just because this query actually asks for all 3,000 rows. So that, that you would expect that. The only caveat is that sorting by index is extremely easy to break. Uh, it's very easy to have something set up and then make some slight modification to your query in such a way that it causes the database to not use the index for sorting and to, and to go back to doing it uh, manually at the time of the query. And uh, one of the most common ways to do this is when you add a second sort uh, parameter, right? So instead of sorting by created at, we wanted to sort by created at and stars, that can, uh, you're essentially asking the database to do something that it can't do with the indices, so it has to do it real time. So idiom four, 
our final, our final idiom, and, and the most odious one, in my opinion, is pagination. This is a typical um, pagination uh, active record. It's not a query. I don't even know what you call this uh, fragment. So this, this is a typical pagination thing. You've got a limit of 10, offset of 100. So this is saying, do this query, count 100 items out, and then give me 10. And if I run explain on this query, I see that, well, the, we're doing a sequential scan and we're, we're looping over 110 rows. You may be thinking that this isn't really that big of a deal because 110 rows, I mean, my, my computer's got 110 gigs of RAM, like how hard is that? But uh, this, is, this is really, the, the reason I call this odious is because it's not all that obvious. The reason this is so bad is that it depends on the offset. So if you have, um, say, an offset of 100,000, you have to do a sequential scan over 100,000 and 10 rows. And what you'll see in real life in your application, uh, if you're being affected by this problem, is that page one will load fast. Imagine you have a, a imagine we have uh, 1,000 pages worth of books, right? Page one loads very fast. Page 10 loads very fast. Page 100, maybe it's starting to get a little bit slower. Page 10,000, it loads so slowly that the request times out. And so it's effectively just broken for your users. Scaling pagination is very, it's another one of those tricky things, at least if you're just using a, a typical um, relational database. The best way to, to do it, again, don't. See if you can get away with not displaying that little bar at the bottom of the screen that has all of the numbers of, of the pages and so forth. And chances are, if you have a case where there's a, you know, 50,000 pages, that's, that's not a very good user experience anyway. So see if you can get away with using a smaller record set. If you can't do that, see if you can um, query each page explicitly in some way. For example, um, the, the, the problem with these pagination queries is that we do this big query, we get a big result set that has, say, 100,000 records in it, and then we um, page through it using limit and offset. See if, instead, you can make each page its own query. So query, you know, 10 or 20 records for page one, 10 or 20 records for page two, et cetera. And there's ways to do this, right? You can um, query a date range, you could query, um, a group of IDs. It's none of these solutions are very happy solutions. I don't I don't like any of them, um, but you know they're 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 workable and uh, you know especially if you have some latitude to change the UI um, so that the user isn't necessarily expecting to have exactly ten results on every page. And that's all for my um, for my idioms. But is that the only, um, are, are these the only idioms where this, this sort of scale, these sort of scaling issues occur? It's, no, obviously not. I kept things intentionally simple just so, uh, so we could get through it in the time that, that we have here. But hopefully now you're a little bit more prepared uh, to deal with these challenges if you, if you find them in your own applications. Chances are they'll look a lot more complex. Chances are your query plans will be a, a lot more complex than the ones I've shown you. Uh, but the basics of it is still the same. It's still pretty simple, right? Use a large data set in development. And as you're developing, if you see any slow queries in the logs, um, check them out. Use explain to dig into them. Uh, use um, some of these advanced uh, explain uh, parameters to get even more data. You can use, uh, there's, a, there's an option called explain analyze that will actually run the query for you and give you sort of real world uh, performance results. And you can, it, it's amazing what you can do uh, just using explain with a little bit of knowledge. And if you're interested in learning more about this stuff, um, you can, well you can follow me on Twitter because that's the, the, the best way to learn anything. There's, <laughs> sorry. Uh, there's also two blog posts that I wrote, um, which you can just Google the titles or hear the, the things. I thought about putting like a tiny URL up here, but then I thought people would think I was trying to like install malware on their computers and 
<laughs> so I just, I didn't bother. Uh, yeah, so between these two articles, you'll get everything I've talked about here, plus uh, quite a bit more detail um, that I couldn't, didn't have time to go into. So that's it.